Hi. Hello. Welcome to Tea Talks. You all know me. I'm Herb the Third. And this is my friend Matt, who you also all should know by now. You all know me. Special guest today is my brand new dog, Chamberlain. Or Chamby. Or Chambo. Or 36 Chamberlain. Or the great Chambino. Mmm. I like Chamberlain. That's what your son calls him. Chamberlain. 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 So he's like a little mm. little Chamberlain. Chamber yeah. dog. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this is Tea Talks. And it's a show where we drink Gong Fu Cha style tea and talk about stuff. We'll go into the dog and the tea and all sorts of stuff as we progress. Mm -hmm. Today's tea is old Shang. We're starting to get old. This is from 1990s like us. We grew up in the 90s and so did this tea evidently. Um, today we're drinking two old Shang Pu'er teas from the 90s. Double tea. Double tea. And we're drinking it in Gai Wan. Gai Wan means lid and, or bowl and lid. Um, they're a type of tea serving vessel. Very practical and made out of porcelain so it doesn't change the taste of the tea at all. Which is nice when you are trying to Figure a tea out. So, getting into more complications. The reason we're drinking this tea today is over time, tea ages. Like, why would you drink a 25-year-old tea? Why would you, Herb? Well, it can change in complexity and flavor. <sighs> Not only that, but there's a little bit of a, a nifty <clears throat> thing with it where... If it was traditionally aged in Hong Kong or a very humid place, it will age faster and maybe round out a little bit flavor-wise and become darker quicker and stuff like this. And if you have less humidity, like in Yunnan or Kuming or whatever, or wherever this one was aged, um, some of the brighter notes will stay, but the tea can be more bitter and harsher for longer. Visually, you'll be able to see this on the camera, and we'll talk about the flavors we go through. Mm -hmm. So that's all that. I drink old tea because I think it is one of the best things ever. It is so, I, it's magic in a cup. So anyways, without further ado, we'll do the rinse here. So when did you get Chamberlain? Shoot, I've almost had him a month now. Almost a whole month? Yeah, oh, almost wow. a month. Cool. And he's, um, you know, he's been like he's the great. best little dog ever. He almost reminds me of like a, a dog that's a few years old because he's like super chill. He's really quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, he whimpers a little when you're not around, but I think that's just a puppy thing, right? Totally. And, uh, but yeah, just super chill, super happy to see. Like he knows me a couple days and... He's, yeah. he's like super excited to see you. Um, he's a big suck. He sleeps on my shoulder and things. He, yeah, he always wants to kind of be sleep on you, yeah. right? Which is awesome. Yeah, and, uh, so if you notice, he has no fur. No except fur. Except a little bit of hair on his face. Yeah. This is a Chinese crested, but he's also a Chihuahua Brussels Griffin. So he's a Chi Chi Griffin. And, um, you know, for a year now, I've been wanting a dog, and I could go right into that tangent, but... Uh, I found my dream dog, and the boy loves him, and all my friends love him, and mm -hmm. he's super chill, and he's learning tricks, and he sleeps on my neck at night, and my girlfriend loves him. And yeah. No complaints. I love his boy. fashion sense. Yeah. He's good. He takes after you in that. Yeah. He's got a really colorful thing. Colorful. About yeah, co like colorful. his tie Yeah. Yeah. He's great. We, we were asking him, like, we're going over questions we might ask him, and we, we, we asked yeah. him about global warming. Yeah, so it's a bit controversial, but he's into it because mm. he shivers all the time. He's, it, he's cold. He's got no fur. The globe could be a bit warmer. According to him. But, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, there's something I wanted to ask you about the rinse, which you just did. It, oh, yeah, the rinse happened, yeah. Why does it matter? And because I only ask that because... I heard the rinse takes out a lot of the caffeine in the tea. Good question. When you do it. So what I've been doing, my morning tea ritual, I've started leave I've started not rinsing it. Mm. And that is because I want a little caffeine kick in the morning. Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna hear 
here, folks. Um, so the first tea rinse is to wake up the leaves, to hydrate the leaves. Also, when dealing with pu'er leaves or just tea in general, some of the rinse helps wash off like factory dust and packaging dust and dust that's just accumulated. Like this is 25 years old, you better believe I rinse it, it's tough. right? Um, the first rinse doesn't really negate much of the caffeine. Um, the second brew, the, like this one, will have a lot of caffeine and the th second and the third. So I think the first four brews have the caffeine. The first rinse isn't going to have much because like you can see that nothing really comes off. Mm. Uh, caffeine is hot water extractable, but if the leaves haven't fully gotten wet, really, it's not going to come out. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So that's what I know with that. So I you can see this one is, it's going to change over the brews, but this one's definitely darker than this one already. Mm -hmm. The next the next brew we should really notice. So I should start rinsing again. Yeah, I, I, that, I would. I those would, dusties. Yeah, you know, it's controversial, right? Like, you never know what you're rinsing off, and mm. it's probably all a good thing. Um, yeah, so let's... Let's do it. Yeah, let's try Steve Rooney. So what? I believe the darker one is the Zongcha. I'm Should we try that first? Or what are you doing? Yeah, let's try the darker one first. Sure. Yeah. Cheers. Oh yeah, that's old. You can taste the old right off the bat. Tastes the old. Get the woodiness to it. Mm -hmm. So this is interesting too because it's like it's a it's a shang pu'er. Shang. 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 Raw. Shang shang. Raw. Raw. Um, but it's all it's giving me like a a pu uh, show pu'er kind of mm -hmm. taste, right? Because so, I guess it's been sitting. Yeah. So I've told you about this, but the more times we go through it, the more it's going to sit for really anyone. So this is Shang Pu'er. It's an old style of tea where they just they lightly steam it, sun dry it, press it. It's good to go. The reason they used to press these teas is it could tra travel far distance and pack down small. Right. Um, as we've done over our last few sessions, we've shown the different ages of the Shang Pu'er, where it was very green tasting and floral at first. Mm -hmm. Then last time with my brother Evan, we had the gold teenage shung with those kind of light bitters honey-ish tobacco-y taste mm. and now we're getting to the old which again some tea drinkers don't even drink it till it gets old okay now these are both 25 years old but you know there's like a 35 year taste and 50 year taste mm. and still some people will be like oh not until it's 50 years not until it's 40 whatever yeah yeah um so up until around like 1970s you know, uh, the Chinese in um, Yunnan started experimenting with the possibility of speeding up this aging process when dealing with tea. Mm. And it's also kind of said that maybe they learned some of the skills from um, Anhua with when they're doing uh, Liu Bao tea, which is another fermented tea. We don't have to get into the HS. Anyways, back to the... So, in about the 70s, 60s, 70s or whatever, they... Um, they started fermenting tea, and that's when they made the show pu'er. So they fermented it. After two months, it looks dark like this. Mm -hmm. And then they made cakes of it. And right. it tastes similar to this, but this, this would be maybe considered like the higher class of tea because it takes 25 years just to get this flavor. Right, right. Right? With show pu'er, you get that type of flavor, the earthiness, after a few years. Yeah. You can age show pu'er, and then it gets smooth and blah, blah, blah. And I goes, we're getting, oh. we're getting a little crazy. But yeah. that's the point. They were trying to make this. Oh, okay. And so this one. And, and this one is the 1998 Wild Arbor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of woodier. Woodier, brighter. Yeah. Bright, yeah. Clearer. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, these teas are going to taste different because they come from different plantations. But as we brew it, we'll probably see in the steeps and really mm -hmm. notice the drying condition or the storage condition differences. Right. Right, so this one's still pretty clear. The next one, we'll, we'll let it sit for a minute and really show us what is happening. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, so you, it's interesting you're talking about the storage conditions. Mm -hmm. um, and so how you, but you said it was, you told me it was quite easy to store these things, right? It is. Some so, people just, you said they just put it, leave it in a bowl. 
like in a cupboard, because I've read, mm. I've been doing reading, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm more, more into this, mm -hmm. um, that you shouldn't leave it anywhere in your kitchen no. because it'll absorb the kitchen smells. Kitchen smells and garbage smells and things like that. Mm. Um, so back to the, the, the main storage thing. So if you go into the Shung Pu'er world or Pu'er world or HT world, they're going to talk about storage. Hong Kong and Guangdong, I believe, would be storage conditions of humidity. I'm, I'm not fully sure about Guangdong, but Hong Kong for sure is mm. um, a very humid place. Right by so, the ocean. Yeah, and it's warm. So the humidity and the heat is going to just speed up the aging process, I guess, um, make it more fermentable, mm -hmm. but it can still age in less hot and less humid climates. My bedroom is where I'm aging my teas, and, um, you know, I got some heat lamps in there for other things and stuff, and I, I, got, I keep the heat on, so I keep it at room temperature 20 to 22, mm -hmm. and then I got a big bowl of water that's bringing it up to about 44 humidity, that is definitely not hot enough or humid enough for some of these storage people that talk about. But I find my tea is slowly changing and smoothing out really nice. So I find it to be great. All right. Right? I, yeah, I store it in the kitchen. I don't, I don't have a spot yeah. yet. Yeah. Um, but I haven't really noticed. I mean, I like I put it in a cupboard, mm -hmm. and then it's sealed either in like a mason jar mm -hmm. or in the Ziploc yeah, bag. Yeah, as long as it's sealed, so, it should be okay. Yeah, so it's not like I have these like paper cakes out in mm -hmm. there, right? So yeah. I, for me, I've never tasted anything. Like, and, know, and, and, and then we're also getting to the, the fact that if you're going to drink it in the next year, whatever. Yeah. In the sealed yeah. bags. But if you bought a, bought a, a one-year-old tea and you want to age it for 30 years, then where it's being aged and the temperature mm. and humidity actually matters. Or yeah. if you want a 15-year tea to start tasting darker over 10 years, right? Not, not to mention that. If it's aged well, it's worth more. Yeah. Meh, meh. And I'm getting really excited, too, because, like... Do we see a difference now? Oh, yeah. So, uh, roughly around the same age teas totally different in darkness mm -hmm. right wow and it will be different in tasteness too like um or i don't know if tasteness is a word taste is, uh, is another herb word the herb word i, I make like up words. i'm gonna put it right there tasteness tasteness and then and then if there's like multiple people experiencing it's like the tastenesses tastenesses of the yeah. brim or there something. we go yeah herb words we should make our own tea language yeah, why not? We're, a, we're kind of like our own microcosm here. For sure. You can, you know, okay, ferment so, up Okay, so which one are you drinking? Okay, so you're drinking the Wild Arbor. Wild Arbor. Yeah, much brighter. Mm-hmm. Oh, baby. And I won't even get into the energies of these, but as teas, well, I will. As teas age, the caffeine and the other um, amino acids and theanine and stuff, I, I, I think change and develop. Mm -hmm. So the energy you get off this tea is like very calming, mm. but you could still do a good run. Very a adaptogenic, like mm. calms you out but gives you energy. You could definitely meditate or you could definitely go for a long hike. Yeah, and uh, if we could like transition that into some of the health benefits of these things. Like I have noticed, I was a huge coffee drinker for about 15 years, right? Mm -hmm. Coffee every day, I needed mm -hmm. coffee. Oh. Multiple so pots, pots of coffee. Um, it's this year I transitioned to just to this, yeah. right? And actually, this has been very calming to me in the morning. Yeah. I'll wake up. Uh, as I'm doing this, I'll consciously like, I, I'll pull out my phone because I'm addicted to phones like everybody else. Um, but now, since I'm doing this ceremony, I remember, you know, this is time to take some gong fu cha time. Yeah. And relax and just sip tea. Yeah. So the whole ceremony itself has like kind of calmed my morning. Yeah. Whereas usually I'm the type of person I get up, I'm late, I gotta drink my coffee, rush out the yeah. door, right? I get up early, do this, I just focus on the tea, I put my phone away, and it's tea tasting time for 10, 15 minutes, right? And I've just noticed that has, has just significantly improved my life because it's taken a lot of the stress out of the morning. Yeah. Right? On top of that, the whatever is in these teas, and maybe you can expand upon mm -hmm. that, has totally changed my digestion mm -hmm. and just completely upped my gut health. Yeah. Right? I, I uh, 
because of stress, I run my own business, drinking coffee all the day, all the time. Um, I've just, I've just had, you know, indigestion, cramps, you know, that stress you get in your stomach. Mm. This stuff seems to have taken it all away. And I mean, I don't know. It's, it's just completely improved my gut health. I yeah. feel, you know, I'm not, uh, well, um, if I can interject, uh, yeah, yeah. or chime, more like chime. The tea you're drinking mm. every morning is Shopuer tea, mm. and it is known across the board. A lot of older Chinese people in China supposedly drink Shopuer tea for digestion. So each category of tea has different health properties, so I'm not going to go into them, but you are drinking the tea that does that, and now you, you spoke about it doing that for you. Which mm -hmm. high five, high five. That's it. Yes. Not to mention you're starting your own practice and it's slowing you down. It's ending you up. It's all what this is yeah. for. Um, I was talking to you yesterday. I wasn't even talking at you. I was talking like more questionnaire. Um, I drink tea, and I think the simplest way to talk about it for me would be: if I can't sit down and tea, how am I supposed to life? I don't know. You know. Like this is simple, it's simple. Sit down, enjoy yourself, tone in with the subtleties of the experience, mm. you know, quiet your mind and uh, see where it takes you. And if you can't do that, then oh, man, oh, 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 oh. I, I, I encourage you to try because I, I, I would feel bad, you know, if I started learning about these people all busy and freaking out. You know? Deceptively simple because Gong Fu. Okay, this is the Zong Cha, the darker one. Zong Cha. Gong Fu Cha, tea with grape skill, right? Yeah, Every right. time you're sitting in the morning doing that, I think to myself, I'm getting more skilled at this. You're learning. I'm you're, making you're going tea. to school. You're going to tea And school. it doesn't seem like, you know, this. it seems so simple mm -hmm. that there is no skill, but no, it's like every second counts in brewing these things. That's what yeah. I've, I've started to notice, yeah. right? And it's tea school. Like, your tongue is toning in. Mm. So even, let's say you fucked it up for a year and then landed one really good brew, Mm -hmm. Your tongue's not going to lie. It's going to be like, yo, bro, yeah. what'd you do right there? And you'll remember it because you want to enjoy it. Totally. Right? Yeah. So, you know, yeah, the first people to do this type of tea didn't know anything. Right? Mm -hmm. And they probably took a long time and figured it out. Then they passed on their stuff. And it's been going on, like, Gong Fu Cha's been going on for like 800 years. So, mm -hmm. whatever passed on knowledge I've gotten through Google and the few tea expert masters slash cats that I've talked to have... Totally. Taught me up, but the T's taught me way more than anyone's verbalized, right? 100%. So, did you taste the difference with these? I did, yeah. I mean, the bitterness is a little higher with uh, with this one. Mm -hmm. So, but, um, yeah, I just know the, notice the brightness in the other one mm. a lot more. Um, yeah, I mean... And this might transition to something else. Mm -hmm. Another master out of China mm -hmm. we need to talk about mm -hmm. is Dr. Ho. Oh, the 90s. From the 90s. Another yeah. master from the 90s. Where is that thing? Oh, maybe no. Well, let's, let's go. We'll go back okay, to we'll Dr. Ho. We'll come back to Dr. Ho. All right, cool. So, so what do we got? Next question. What do we got? Oh, we got a whole page full. Oh, something you and I have also been mastering. Hmm. The Frisbee. Frisbee. Right. Frisbee's We've been good. doing the Frisbee a lot. Yeah, we're learning how to, like, they're, they're tricky little devils to throw. They are. You know, it's a simple game, but it, it's tricky to get a consistent throw. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, I'm not really a sportsy person. I used to do, the, like, I like working out. I like jogging. You're but, a physical person, but you're not really a sportsy person. That's it. Yeah. So when, when it comes to Frisbee, it like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm liking the hand-eye coordination and stuff. Yeah, Like, I 100%. definitely understand that there's things I've missed in my physical education mm -hmm. that can be found with stuff like that. 100%. Right? So, yeah, I like Frisbee. Frisbee's cool. And I, I really want to start playing Frisbee golf. We'll do a little, well, let's take a little break. Let's break it up. And then go back to Frisbee. All right. When we're at it. Yeah. And we're back. Side to side. Side to side. So yeah. So well, I was on I was on my ultimate frisbee team in Ooh. high school. Oh yeah. Shout out Rosedale Ravens. Oh, I didn't know yeah. about this. I did. I yeah. This. I played. A, a I wasn't time. a very good member. I uh, there was something more fun to do, huh. which involved calculus. Well, no. Kind of what you do 
behind the bleachers, then I would do that. Play Pogs? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we played Pogs. Yeah. Cool. So, but I remember doing that. I think we were, came in second last in the city. Mm. I think we beat some big school's B team once, mm. and that was it. Oh, just so you know. Chamberlain likes tea as well. Oh, he's in And I think that's a big thing, you know, getting a dog that likes Chinese tea. Like, that makes sense for me. He's and a Chinese life. dog. Chinese dog. Mm. But I don't give him much tea. I give him, like, a drop or two, right? Because it's not overly great for him, so I don't want to hurt him or anything. But I, I let him taste it. Oh, yeah. I let him taste it. And I, it, I think it's cute. There you go. There you go. And I figure, like, he'll probably drink a drop off the floor anyway. So, you like this one? Oh, he's quite the tea dog. Yeah, what about this one? He just which lapped one? it up. Oh, wow. Okay, now, which one do you like better? He keeps going for the Zong Cha. So Zong Cha. He likes Hong Kong storage. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, we'll yeah. keep that in mind. And so I drink a lot of tea now with him. So I'm not alone no more in the morning. Mm -hmm. You can you cannot do that, though. We'll turn this around. I don't like the possibility of him tipping it. There. Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, oh! Uh oh. Dr. Ho. The man himself. He was also from the 90s. This T's from the 90s. Dr. Ho's from the 90s. I got a bad neck um, and shoulder and hip and stuff, and I go through pain. And for the longest time, I felt like my neck just needed to be stretched. Sometimes I hang from like the monkey bars, my kids' school and stuff too. But then I, I seen this. And this is great. I don't have the electronic Dr. Ho stuff that I want to get, but I picked this up first. And I guess you're kind of supposed to use this after you use the electronics, but oh. I thought it'd be fun to do a product review while drinking tea. I Yeah, I, was, I remember being exposed to so much Dr. Ho. He was always on TV. Yeah. Back I mean, in the 90s, man. He was always... Totally. And he had the, the pulsers, right? Yeah, that's yeah the electronic. Stop it. Remember he had those, uh, yeah, those pulsing things. Do you remember those things that wrapped around your stomach that were supposed to give you a oh, six pack? Yeah, yeah. Was, was those Dr. Ho's or just a workout one? I think Dr. Ho was a doctor, so he just worked on like doctor stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know. One. Those scam ones, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, like, I knew one fat. kid who did it and he was still fat. So you just got to buckle it up and, and, and then you're good to go. Mm -hmm. I think the dog's really interested in what's going on here, too. Yeah. It's okay. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Don't worry. Let's have some tea before I start inflating. Mm -hmm. She was supposed to wear this for like 20 minutes and slowly inflate it more and more. But mm -hmm. I'll get to a point where I can't even talk. So it'll be funny. You got to stop. He's only four months old, so... We don't give him a hard time, but like this doesn't look gravitational, gravitationally good. But after 20 minutes, you take this thing off, and yeah, you get you get a pretty good effect. Definitely feels like I've stretched my neck, and oh, yeah. it's supposed to push your neck a little bit away from your shoulders. It's kind of like one of those blood pressure monitor things. Similar. It, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure like it's all designed for like old people. Like old cats are probably the market okay. for this. So sure. you know, like oh yeah, I got a blood pressure thing, and then I got this thing. And yeah. They're used to it. They're used to it. Mm. You know, and we're bound to get old one day too. So. Well, we pretty much are boomer. Mm -mm. No, I'm not. No, I'm a You're millennial. Not? I'm a millennial. Okay. I'm a Nintendo. I'm the. What is it? The golden years or something? I'm like a Nintendo guy. Well, you're a boomer shooter. A boomer shooter? Oh, yeah. yeah I'm like a boomer, boomer shooter, shooter yes. So. so that's what, yeah, I'm a boomer shooter. I got a lot of boomer. I'm, I'm, For sure. It's, it's funny how you adopt boomer um, things. As it's you get weird. Older. Well, yeah, you just find, you find these things that are interesting that you never would before, right? Yeah, like yeah. neck. Yeah, like, like stuff like this. Like, this is, this is sick, man. Okay. Like, we're getting there. I have 911 on call in yeah. case anything happens here, so. Yeah. We are, uh, we But you know, sick. there's nothing against Dr. Ho. Like, if I get hurt in this, I do not blame Dr. He's Ho. He's a real doctor, right? I, I have a DVD of him downstairs telling me how to, like, stretch and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thing. He's like, this is yeah. how you get out of bed. This is how you garden. Hmm. So I'm gonna. Okay. 
Let's go look. Let's well, look. so as you're as, as you're doing that, how do I look? Uh, yeah, you could look like you might be in pain. Kind of you're getting really red. Yeah, uh, like a tomato. A little bit, yeah. Okay. Well, let's see if a herbal oh, tomato. Oh, oh, see, that, there's a little bead in here that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, uh, well, besides this, mm -hmm. you're gonna be going back vegan. Yeah, I'm gonna veg life. Veg life. Yeah, it's coming. At the end back. of this month, I'm gonna go back vegan. I might even, month. I might even be gluten intolerant. Yeah, you said it. you've been saying that. You had waffles. I had last waffles night? last night, and I ate six in a row because they were the cinnamon ones. Okay. And the last one, I got in the back of my throat. I and I've been getting that with sandwiches and other types of food. Like super scratchy and oh, okay. almost feels like a, almost like a sore throat. But right. it isn't. It's directly after I have a sandwich. Okay. So I think it's a bit of a reaction. It could be. <laughs> I think this is a great A product. You know, it's doing this is it. good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll save my. No, no, stay like that. I like. I, okay, I well, like I'll it. do a couple more because you're supposed okay. to wait until you stretch. Yeah, yeah. You, you you know, no half measures here. Yeah. We're we're doing the full thing. Okay, it's getting uh, pretty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just let me know if you're about to pass out. Well, I think I'll be okay. Okay. Um. So gluten intolerant. Mm hmm Right. That could be a thing. I don't know. I'm always like I heard a lot of people bit. are. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um oh, another thing we're talking about mm -hmm. with uh the spectacle going on here. It feels like our society is devolving into spectacles. And we were saying when is the president of the United States contest not going to be a vote anymore, mm -hmm. but just a boxing match? Oh yeah, a boxing right? match. Because celebrity boxing all the time. Yeah, imagine Joe Biden and Trump box each other. Floyd Mayweather and every alive president all at it once. Would. Well, then Floyd Mayweather would be president. He should. For the next twenty years. Yeah. Probably. We don't want bro like yeah. I think I think I think they should all just like. All the presidents should just take on Floyd Mayweather, and um, well, like three on one or something. Anyone that's still alive. Anyone that's and some candidates. All former presidents. Former presidents, recent right. president, and candidates. Fuck it. Okay. Floyd Mayweather, it'd be great. Why would they fight Floyd? Well, because he seems to be fighting. You know, he fought McGregor he for fought cash. McGregor. Yeah. That's a big joke. And like, who? What? What was that? Oh well. So today, as this is filming, it, it might actually be. Yeah, right as we're filming, it's Jake Paul. And uh, Ben Askren, mm -hmm. and I've been kind of getting into that hype a bit. Um, ben Askren, obviously, like an accomplished UFC fighter, and Jake Paul, kind of an infamous uh, YouTube star. Yeah, this who's is what we're talking about. Who's younger? Okay, how do you feel? How's the neck? I feel stretched. Okay. Yeah, pretty good. Well, maybe should I? Maybe I'll try it out. Maybe I tried in the, the next. I'm gonna get time. super yeah. red though. Yeah. Like my head might pop off for that. But you see, I wasn't really able to keep up with the pouring of the tea. Though. No, no. Mm. Yeah, so that's the reason I said the president and just joking around is yeah, they're like mm. this Jake Paul is just some douche. Yeah, he's, he's gonna not, fight he's like not a real well fight. Liked. He's he's had two boxing matches. But he, um, is he a boxer? No, no, no. He's had the, the thing is, and I was getting into it is like he's had no amateur matches, right? No. And the amateur matches are where you like learn your heart. Right, you learn how to be a fighter, mm. right? Because you'll get yourself in the situations. Um, I mean, I've I've been in like a handful of fights in my mm. life, but you don't really realize until you're in a fight how scary it is. Mm. And if you know your ass is gonna be beat, <laughs> like you know, if you're gonna if you want to run or not, right? Yeah, sure. Because there's a certain level of panic that can happen if you know a guy is gonna whoop you. No, oh, yeah. right. So. I mean, the thing is with Ben Askren is he's like he's he's fought like real dangerous people in the UFC. Oh yeah. yeah. But he's a wrestler, right? Yeah. Whereas Jake Paul might have been training boxing more, but in overall fight experience, Ben Askren, oh. he's older. He's like thirty. I thought he had no fight experience. I thought he was just a YouTube jackass. But he's had celebrity boxing matches, which mm. are like with non-boxers. Mm. Well. So. All I know is I think presidents should fight, and um, you know, like 
like big tech giants like Zuckerberg and Bill Gates should box and okay and um, yeah give away some free tech or something that'd be cool yeah you got a little drop on you oh oh yeah but there that's we've talked about this the what? tea and the beer right right speech. right tea people okay. will be knowing they'll be like ah oh, that guy's an old shung gotta, drinker yeah. so he's got shung on his beard yeah shung shung stains yeah shung stains shung stains Sick. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. It's it's interesting before a fight too, kind of the psychology of what oh, happens yeah. too. And I saw the press conference between these guys, and Ben Askren looked at, like absolutely dead calm, and he was laughing and joking and totally secure with himself. Whereas this kid, he was like yelling. He, he was acting like basically like a, a ten year old in yeah. front of it because he's scared. Yeah. And and it's interesting too between two men who are about to fight each other, mm -hmm. you can kind of tell who's kind of the dominator mm -hmm. by who reacts more to what mm -hmm. the other person gives off. So if you're that's constantly the react, and that's what I saw. I saw I saw Ben Askren saying something and Jake Paul reacting immaturely. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's scared, because he, he's his brain says, I have to say something, well, right? Yeah. Where, like, you know, because I don't want to lose face here, but Ben Askren wasn't responding as much. It, it kind of showed he was in control of himself a lot more. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's... That's martial arts. Martial arts. Yeah. Some guy just... YouTube. And, yeah. Right? I bet, like I said, that's what I've noticed in the last, like, while with professional fights is it's really theatrical, mm -hmm. right? And WWE. Yeah, WWE yeah. now is kind of the UFC on whatever. I love I'd WWE. It. I'd watch all of yeah. them. I'd watch all of them. I just, I just think it's like. Eh. Did you watch it when you were like a, a teenager? WWE. Uh, I watched a little bit with the Wolfpack and Ooh, Road Dog yeah. back then. Road Dog. A little bit back NWO. then. NWO. Yeah, because I had friends that liked it at the time, so I watched a little bit. It's good. Yeah, like. The I loved it. I was, I was always watching it. Yeah. I was up. I was up, uh, I'd get so excited, and my mom, because my mom would be watching, so she'd be like, okay, go up in my room and watch your WWE on this little, tiny little screen, you know, those oh, 90s. Oh, because she was like, using the good TV. Because she was watching, and then I would just get so excited, I'd be wrestling the pillows and stuff, I was like 12 years old, I was having <laughs> a great time, you know, and then me and my friends would wrestle in our front yards. Yeah, of course. Right, and do be Stone Cold or The Rock, and yeah, it was, it was the greatest. Yeah. The greatest. So mm. I actually was like, yeah, like I'm 35 now. So when I was like five years old, like I remember, like I think I remember seeing it on TV, like the old school first edition wrestlers, like, like Hulk, Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. And Jake remember, the Snake. Yeah, I remember seeing that as a kid. I was like, wow. So that's when I saw it. Then nothing, and then a little bit of the Road Dog era with the Stone Cold. That's yeah. Bad. Did you ever see The Wrestler, the movie, with Mickey Rourke? Great movie. Oh, so good, yeah. It just really shows how those guys get, you know, kind of beaten to hell yeah. from that lifestyle. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like testosterone ballerina, right? It's pretty much what <laughs> you right. are. It's right? true, yeah. It's it's you, 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 you get treated like, like kind of like a prostitute. And yeah. then, yeah, whatever, well. And then, yeah. I remember once I seen it, it was... Like, uh, it was brutal. I was watching the wrestling. They're like, okay, now we're going to do this, like, tribute to all, like, the dead wrestlers. And then it was just, like, like a good few minutes of names going by. And they had their age, and they, lots of them were, like, 30s. Yeah. And it's it's because, yeah, fast life. Type, tough lifestyle, traveling, drugs, women. They get all that stuff, right? Which, yeah. you know, isn't good for longevity. It's okay here and there, but longevity was. Oh. I think indulging in those things ain't that good. Poor guys. Well, the thing, another, and that brings to our another topic, something oh. we're both excited in indulging in. Oh, what? Now that the sun is out, this the spring leaves are just budding. Ah. You can smell the heat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Smell the sun. Do you smell the sun? A little bit. Well, little I smell bit. the things that are getting heated up from the sun. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's the sun, I guess. Yeah. We're excited about mushroom hunting. Yeah, so mushroom mm -hmm. hunting around here. Best place in the world to mushroom hunt, basically. Yeah, and you could, you could probably find certain. I'm, 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 this is like third, fourth year really looking around for them. Um, I know turkey tail come and goes throughout the year, but mm -hmm. I do know that in August, Rishi, which is um, Ganoderma lucida or something, and 
Chicken of the Woods both come out in August. Right on. So I normally start like late September, October, but I've been missing out on my two favorites because I'm, I'm, I was going too late. So late August, I'm going to start looking for some reishi and Chicken nice. of the Woods. Chicken of the Woods. So what are the benefits of reishi? Well, reishi is um, like there's the Chinese reishi and it's one of the best mushrooms medicinal herbal medicines mm -hmm. on the planet everything from and we're gonna be making sleep. tea out of this right? yeah uh, yeah I make tea I make tinctures I, I do things like that mm -hmm. but it's the, the, it's kind of like there's too many health benefits yeah. everything from immunity to cancer killing to help with your sleep to help lucid dreaming all sorts of stuff so Google benefits of reishi. Then Google West Coast varnish conch benefits because that's what the ones we'll be finding here. Mm. And then chicken of the woods is kind of the highest antioxidant thing around, plus um, anti-inflammatories. So right. two really good things there. And it tastes just like fresh chicken breast if you fry it. Ooh, it's insane. Baby. It's actually like one of the most tastiest nice. mushrooms I've had next to hedgehogs so far. Totally. But. Mushrooms are great. I mean, the, the thing on mushrooms, right, is we have a friend, right, and he said, he's to he said as we're picking, you know, mushroom death is the worst death can. on the planet. If you're drinking what it does. Yeah. So if you're out looking for mushrooms, just make sure. If, you, if you're unsure what it is, yeah. don't eat it. Well, that, that's the rule. I, I think in the 90s and 80s and whenever, there was a lot of microphobia where they're saying mm. just don't eat a mushroom, period, yeah. from outside. Yeah. So it's only in the last, like, 10 years that enough people have been listening to the hippie voices, right? And enough people have been studying these things mm. to slowly start to spread the possibility that not only are they good, mm -hmm. but they can kill all types of cancers and all types of everything. So, I believe there's some of the highest quality medicines out there, and yes, be careful. Be Go careful. with experienced members, and totally. not people who say they're experienced, but people who you know have been sipping back on mushroom tea for a while and aren't dead. Totally. And, then, and the, the polypores, I think, are the good place to start, because yeah. a lot of them are, like, just a few are, po are toxic. Yeah, I'm not, right? I'm not quite sure, but there's a definitely a handful of easy spotted big ones yeah. that you just can't go wrong. So poly but red belted polypore, Artist artist conch. Conch. That's, that's what I keep a lookout for, right? That's They're not, easy to identify. Good place to start. They're good. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the reishi. I mean, that, how, that really helps uh, brain function, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, you know, thinking, stress, mm -hmm. all the nervous system, basically. Yeah. Right. So. Totally, they're, they're all great for you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we will be doing that. Oh, and I want to train him to smell mushrooms. There you go. He will be my mushroom hunter. Like a uh, truffle sniffing dog. I hear there's truffles, so maybe I'll get him on truffles. He's gonna be a mushroom sniffing dog. Yeah. So. Yeah. Be like, do you see them? Do you see the mushrooms? You got it. <laughs> do you know what they are? <laughs> you should almost just make an episode just purely of this guy. Chewing a bone, mm -hmm. some ASMR or something, just Chamberlain chewing bow. Yeah, something creepy about ASMR. Very creepy. I try to stay away from it. <laughs> well, definitely, like, if you're not to poo on your idea. If you're into yin yang twins, you're probably into <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> That's the whole category. Yin -yang twins. <laughs> They're pretty whispery. They're oh, whisper right, right, right. Oh, I see it. Yeah. They're a whisper yeah, yeah. rapper. So I think. Yeah. They were huge. Yeah. The, yeah. Where are they now? Uh, Try to find a picture of them where they are now. Well, with that, we'll take a little break. Yeah. You can pet your dog. Yes, pet the dog. And, uh... Pet the dog. We're back. We're back. Hey. So I figured maybe you do a couple nice, long steeps. To Ooh. Really taste the difference. And you were saying the good thing about Guy Wands, right? Mm. Especially porcelain ones. Mm-hmm. They good for whatever tea you want. Yeah, right. you just rinse them out and they're good to go. Um, they they gives you an honest taste of the tea. Honest With the taste. yixing clay, it rounds it out, smooths it out, adds minerals. It can really bond with the type of tea you drink in it, mm. and definitely probably make your tea more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. But this is good to really kind of hone in on what's going on with the tea. If the you're gonna judge a tea, tea taste. yeah, the exact tea taste. The exact tea taste. And, oh, I just want to talk about, I was in Vancouver mm. a couple of weeks ago, and I went to the greatest tea shop I've ever been to, 
called The Chinese Tea Shop. Shout out mm -hmm. Daniel in Chinatown, Vancouver. It's like a tea museum. Yeah. Right? He lets you in. He lets one person in because of COVID stuff. Mm. And then he locks the door. And then he's like, how can I help you? And he followed me around the whole thing. Any question I had, I was like, this, this, that. I wanted to try all of this stuff. He didn't let you try it because of COVID stuff. Mm. But you've been there when he let you. I think it was yeah, like pre-COVID yeah, 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 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, lots of times, lots of times. He's great. He's so good. Yeah. So, but just, just some of these things. And like on his website, he's got clay pots from the Qing dynasty. Mm. That's like a hundred years ago. Mm. They're like mm. three grand, these mm. little pots. They look awesome. Yeah. Um, cakes, awesome looking cakes. And he has I really would, old tea cakes. And like when I want any decent HT, I go to him because I trust him and I know it's legit HT. Mm -hmm. um, if I want to learn stuff or get a pot for a specific tea, you know, it only costs me, what, 10, 15 bucks to walk on the bus mm -hmm. and then a couple bus rides and I'm at his shop and he will, he will hook me up a pot for the type of tea. He knows the best one. So I consider him my tea master that I know, right? Super nice guy too. The best, the best. He's super he, he nice wants guy. to educate about tea. He wants to share tea. He loves his culture. Mm -hmm. He loves the tea plant. And it's it's great. It's one of the coolest things. It's so nice. Never been to a museum and had more fun than I have going to Daniel's. Totally. So it's 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 no joke. And um yeah, hope he has many, many more years of uh tea knowledge sharing tea knowledge. and cups sharing and all that good stuff. If you're in Vancouver, check it out, Chinese Tea Shop. You're missing out if you don't check it yeah, out. Really. Yeah, yeah. So, there we go. So, oh, which brings us to the next topic. Hmm. I mean, you know, going to a nice, calm tea place like that, it's a bit of a healing experience, hmm. wouldn't you say? Yeah. So, what kind of healing things are you up to? We, we were talking about mushrooms, hmm. kind of neurosis benefits hmm. of the reishi. Hmm. But what I'm doing yeah. is I'm growing my own mint mm. on my balcony so I can have fresh mint tea. And that's super good for you too. So mm -hmm. um, what you mentioned something with a bunch of lemon balm oh, that lemon. you wanted to do. Yeah, so I got a lemon balm growing outside and it's a, it's a simple herb related to the mint um, plant. It's a super calming nervine herb or whatever, but I was thinking of um, trying to process it kind of like tea. Ooh. Like I've seen a lot of videos on how people process tea, and I'm, I'm sure I could roll it into little balls and dry it out. I could probably make a lemon balm oolongish looking thing. And nice. Obviously, I'm not trying to do anything. I just want to, I want to see if manipulating the lemon balm different ways while drying ends up being different taste lemon balm tea. I, I feel it will. Yeah. So I'm going to just try to mess around with it because it's free and it's out front. And I, I, have, I have hung dry it before and then like um, dried it in a dryer and that's both tasted different. And I've cooked it fresh and that tastes different than drying it. So yeah, I'm just going to have fun messing around with herbs. Not to mention... Um, lemon balm is super good for um, anxiety and being calm, and it's, yeah, it's one of those good things for you. Amen. And mm -hmm. uh, back where I used to uh, live, I uh, rented the basement suite on this little hobby farm, and um, I grew something called Ethiopian kale, mm. which has a lot of, it's a, actually a type of mustard, but I remember we started eating this stuff. I had never had it before. Mm. And it basically burned your mouth mm -hmm. every time you ate it. So we like nicknamed it. spice leaves. Yeah, right? spice leaves. And we nicknamed it the... Pain leaf. The pain leaf, right? And we <laughs> challenged each other, Ethiopian kale. Because it kind of hurts. hurts the back It hurts, throat. right? So we were shoving in our mouth as I'm driving back to your place. And we're like, how many pain leaves can you eat? Yeah, we're just stuffing her mouth laughing. And then we kept yeah. trying to offer him to the boy. And like, here, I say, I have a pain leaf. Okay. And he's like, no. He's like, a pain leaf? Why would I eat that? I don't like no pain leaf. <laughs> it's like, come on. Have an Ethiopian kale. Ethiopian Ow. kale. Shout it's out. It's funny. Um, delicious, though. It mm. tastes like leaves mixed with, like, horseradish. Like, it has a little tinge to it. 
they'd be the, probably the best in sandwiches. They'd be mm. like, you don't even need mustard, just throw in some pain leaves. Yeah, I think it's a, it, it's a little like stinging kale where you gotta like blanch mm. it or something mm. before you eat it, but mm. you know. I liked it though. I mean, and this brings us to the next topic. When you don't know something, you think, right? Mm -hmm. And then what happens in your brain when you think? Inventions. Mm. So, we, as we're what, writing this, you, you are like an in inventing master. You're like a mad scientist. I like just came up with inventions. Came up with bam. all these crazy inventions. Like, the, bam! The best I could do is like, okay, my invention was a landscaping robot. Yeah. That could follow me around and, and could help me. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. But you had to, you had a really interesting one. Oh, well, you mentioned, you mentioned like, oh, I want a sunscreen that lasts That's a month. That's right. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, how can you capitalize this? Well, it'd be like a tanning booth. Except right. you go in and you just get like, yeah. and they spray you and then you're good for a month. And then I thought, what happens if you had like a sunscreen that you could like spray on maybe in patterns or like a bunch of different spray cans, this, this month long spray tan stuff. Yeah. But then when you go outside, you tan, but you tan different colors because there's something going on in it. Yeah. Like, like I think we're ready for blue people and purple and oh, totally. all these cool colors. Like bring on the avatar tan. With the avatar tan, use it like leopard print. Patent pending, by the way. Patent pending. Patent pending avatar tan. Leopard you know, people. People are like, I want to look like golden brown. I want to look like a golden beach. But they'll be like, nah, nah, nah. Have you ever been in Victoria? Seen those guys? That, that you could, you could look like Avatar. There you go. Right? Sick. It, it will be a trend one day. It will, it'll catch on. What yeah. else? What else did I invent there? You invented uh, tea strips. Oh yeah, I would like some tea strips. Like, like, you know, like you could just like put it in your tea and find out like what kind of. Um, amino acids and good chemicals they have in it. What has more caffeine? Yeah. What doesn't? Also, I would like I, I've, I've heard like some talk about it, but like an aging thing where you can like find out how old your tea is somehow, right? So you can stop counterfeit because that's another thing. Like people counterfeit tea all, all the time, so be sure you find um, a trusted vendor so you don't get mm -hmm. tea that's supposed to be forty years old, but it's only a week old and it's been like I don't know. It's gross, right? So it's tricky, right? It's they definitely, um, especially when um, if you don't speak um, Mandarin or Cantonese and stuff, and you you get this this tea and you can't even read the packaging, so you never know what you're getting, right? Never so know. you need a trusted vendor for sure. Mm -hmm. And for the sure. last invention that was probably the coolest one. A sneaker that self wraps around your foot. Oh yeah! So you were thinking like it's like a what like a pad and yeah, then you pad. step into it <laughs> and it goes and it wraps around your feet. Yeah, kind of like maybe like one of those snap bracelets, like whoosh, yeah. But for shoes and like just think of how much time you spent tying shoes or like you know as Such as a you get a little, as you get a little older the bending over dealing with shoes uh. or if you're overweight like no one wants to mess with any of that like I would just like step. Wah -wah. done Step you know done. right like like done so like we could just take out all the traditional shoe on the counter look like gone it's just like this flat pancake they're like what is that kind of yeah. look like maybe those alien spiders oh i'd wear that yeah look like the yeezy that new yeezy he's got yeah running shoe that looks like a croc have you seen that i'll put it up right there it's pretty bizarre and I will spacing. watch this and find out better. Oh, it's good. It's good. Perfect. Well, and you know, new inventions, what seems to be on everybody's mind when we mention new inventions, robots mm -hmm. and people being the violent homicidal apes we are, mm. we like, we like robot wars. <coughs> Yeah, was so that a TV you, show? Yeah, so we were talking about Robot Wars, the TV show. Well, that show was pretty cool. It's awesome. I, I saw some of the new stuff. I haven't seen any. They new got stuff. some deadly, deadly bots. They got, it seems to be like kind of stratified into three different kinds. They got flippers, oh. flip the other bot. Okay. They got hammerers. Okay, smash them. Smashers. And then they have um, cutters, cutters oh, or spinners, right? There's, mm. there's apparently there's one, my favorite one, I think it's called like El Toro or something. 
but he's got this like this like spinny spinny uh like rolling pin on his mm. front and then he just drives up to these big heavy ones and he flips them because it's mm. going so fast right i have not seen any of that stuff in it's so good. long i would like to watch it i think it's hilarious and they're big, too. They're probably, like, as big as this table. Yeah. A lot of them, right? And you could, like, I guess if you're smart and know how to build some robots, you could build your own. You build them. Build your own and, like, submit it, you know? Like I saw one that had two guns on it. Mm. And it went, bam, bam. Sick. Oh. That's pretty cool. It'd be dangerous to watch in the audience, I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. They gotta have, like, bulletproof glass. Yeah. But. Well, yeah, those, those robots could definitely mess up, like, an ankle. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't want to put your ankle anywhere near one of these cutting guys. No, and no. Smashers. Robot house guards like them. Uh, another oh, invention. Oh, there you go. Who needs dogs right. anymore? Because that's, like, don't have dogs for protection. I think that's stupid. Nah. So, anyways, you could get these robots. Mm -hmm. And they could be, like, right... They, 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 they come out of your closet by the front door. Yeah. And they just start hacking up ankles, man. Yeah, like ankles smashing toes with the hammer. Yeah, like set up to the alarm system, man. If you're messing around, you got like five ankle slices. Flamethrower. And we'll just think, if you take out someone's ankles, like they're not going to escape they're anyways. not going nowhere. You can come out, come home hours later, and the guy's only made it like 10 He's meters. crawling down, yeah. 10 he, meters. He just grab him by the legs, you pull him back in. And, and he'd be like, oh! You yeah. met Sparky McBlinky, did you? Sparky McSmashed Toe. Yeah. Cutter yeah. McNo Feet. Well, it serves you trying to get at my tea. Huh? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. We just need scientists to make these things. Yeah. That are our friends. That are our friends. That won't steal, yeah. Th give us a discount. Mm -hmm. We'll be making money off them. Oh, yeah. There yeah. you go. We'll help design. Design, I, we could definitely fit in the designer section. We're, we we, we are the I'm idea not, makers. Yeah, not really a meat and potatoes guy. I'm more a spinach and broccoli guy. Mm. Is that what you call those? Ooh, guys? I like idea that. man. That's what I meant. Idea man. <laughs> yeah. A demon. A demon. A demon. <laughs> yeah. That'll be the name of the first robot. Yeah. A demon. First class. First class. Edition. Platinum. Yeah. Well, so how'd you like the 1990s? Did we visit the 90s? Yeah, yeah, it had that kind of 90s optimism, yeah. you know, just out of the Cold War. Yeah. Fresh faced, lots mm -hmm. of skateboarding, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. A little bit of hip hop. A little hip, in hip there. hop in there. Mm -hmm. Kind of the, mm, the bitter, the bitter astringency. Yeah, is the what 90s. I like. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. so. I like the, I like visiting the nineties. Yeah, and you can through tea. You can through tea. Mm -hmm. You so. know, like if if you can't build a time machine right now, well, you can sip tea that kind of is like experiencing mm. the time. Like this was picked in the nineties, dried in the nineties. The farmers were maybe at their prime in the nineties. Probably. This was an investment for someone in the nineties. They're like, hey, I'm gonna buy thousand of those cakes because going away. 25 years from now it's going to be on tea talks the coolest show ever on the youtubes totally and um yeah represent number one in humility yeah that's what we are yeah um well we're, we're the number sleep. one we're the number one ancient tea channel on youtube in the james bay vicinity victoria yeah. guaranteed mm -hmm. you know you know like we are number one in James Bay. Number one in... Tea show. Probably in Victoria. Number one tea show in Victoria. That's that's a big job. I don't know okay. for sure. There could be some underground stuff. Maybe. You know, I don't know yet. I don't know, but... but they don't talk about toe-smashing robots. Yeah. Do they? Let's claim James Bay for sure. James Bay, okay. We got, we got James Bay locked down. Shout We're out James in. Bay. Shout out Central Sandwich. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Unite. Unite. Over a cup of tea. Well, Chamberlain's asleep. Yeah. And, uh... Well, he had those two cups of Zendo 90 Oh, he looks like, so Zendo He's like, right I've now. had two drops, and I'm gonna sleep. So maybe we should put this episode to bed. Unless there was more you wanted to, to chat about. Nah. No. Nah, we're good. Like, I like the taste. We did, we did, we went through our mm -hmm. page, you know. If you stayed and watched this whole episode, you're a legend. You and, are. Um, I... 
Yeah, reach out and join us. Join Fan us for club. tea, man. Join me for tea. You can come over anytime. We can have tea, you know, maybe maybe when restrictions are done. I can meet you outside. We can have like, Yeah. Do some glass. Through some glass. Meters of distance, you know. Yeah. We could have the same tea, just complete different brewing stations. Totally. You know? We'll get, we'll get those cans with the string through them. How'd you like your tea? Yeah, or or we could or we could just do it on Zoom. You know, you can brew zoom whatever tea. you want. You could just yeah. tell me it's the same tea, and we'll just Zoom and talk about zoom it. Zoom and talk, Zoom and talk. Well, the uh, the dog's asleep. We'll put you all to bed now. The sun's going down. We'll tuck you in. The clowns are getting in their car, going home. And yeah, bringing the tents and the circus the, with them. The curtains are falling down. Mm. The camera's running out of batteries. For sure. So we wish you a good tea, a good talk, and make good things show up in your walk.